What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new to the channel too and want to hit that subscribe button, that'll help me out immensely. We have some major things we need to address with the JZX100 Mark II. The JZX100 Mark II is back on jack stands. Unfortunately, but surprisingly, fortunately, had some minor incidents with the radiator last week. I will get into shortly, but in this video, I want to do some fixations on the front bumper, some more cleaning under the chassis, double check all the couplers, make sure they're tight and address my radiator situation. First on the front bumper, I finally figure out how to remove it. It's just a matter of removing my wheel, the fender liner, and there are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the bracket, which are here. Pretty easy to remove. On the front bumper, it is not perfect, so I want to remove the front lip reseal it with double-sided 3M tape, clear weld this lip here because I don't want to source a new one since I'll be going BN in the future. Um, nothing I can really do about this, honestly. And I did finally remove that aluminum front license plate bracket, so it's gotta get the bumper re-cleaned. I also want to see how well I can fix this dent here on the front guard myself. Just gonna heat it up really hot and then kind of put some force on the inside and push it out to the best of my ability. It doesn't have to be perfect because in the future I'll be running a full BN sports kit, BN guards and then bumper or side skirts. Rear bumper, also I want to make the Mark II a little bit lower for this so I'm just going to let this soak in PB Blaster while I eat lunch and then just hit it from the bottom and spindle it back up. And like I mentioned, just check out the couplers, clean, do some more cleaning. And see, these bulbs work because I'm not too sure if they do or not. So last video, you saw that I removed the radiator, cleaned it. We replaced the upper and lower hoses with the Gretti silicone. We did a SARD low temp thermostat and got everything fixed with no issues. I let this thing idle for a good 45 minutes while revving it towards the end to ensure all the air bubbles were out. And then I pressurized the system, let it run for another 10 minutes and it was perfect. Come the next day, once you go back it up to clean my garage and my freaking radiator cracked. First it hairline cracked here, which was very unfortunate. And then I come to realize the inside of the upper neck just disintegrated. And I made sure this clamp wasn't that tight because I know these are like old plastic and they would break. So it broke. No surprise there, this is 25 years old, but a huge shout out to my boy, Rick, for letting me have his JZX100 radiator. I was also last week years old when I finally realized that an automatic radiator also acts as an automatic transmission cooler. So here we have the transmission lines. I don't know what percentage of the radiator acts as a automatic transmission cooler, but that got me thinking that I should run an aluminum or that I can run an aluminum radiator in the Mark II because my brother Warren has a 350Z, it is auto. He's running a Mishimoto aluminum radiator. The only thing that I need to do is run an aftermarket universal trans cooler you see here. So I hit up the team at Mishimoto and ordered myself a very nice universal trans cooler. Comes with a nice core, clamps, bracketry, and hoses. We're definitely going to need more hose. Then I hit up the family at RXZ Japan where I buy most of my parts. About 90% of my Skyline parts have came through RXZ Japan. Great customer service, awesome shipping, and also the yen to USD exchange rate is incredibly low. I think the yen rate right now is 0 0.0069 per one USD dollar. So do not sleep. If you need to buy parts from Japan, I would hop on that right away and definitely hit up RZ Japan. But from them, I went ahead and ordered a Gretti all aluminum radiator, which should be shipping the end or the middle of next week. So hopefully, because shipping is usually good with them, cross my fingers, I'll be receiving that radiator the end of next week. Also in this video, we will go ahead and drain the coolant again, remove the radiator again, and plan a nice route for the universal transmission cooler. 
I'm thinking of putting it somewhere up here because there's an air duct on the front bumper here so we can get some solid airflow. And one last thing before we begin an update on my Project Mew brake system. These are expected to be at my front door the first week of October. Update, okay, so I got the front lip removed, bumper and lip cleaned. Go ahead and scuffed the surface area to remove as much as the adhesive as I can. Don't mind the pits here. Paint really isn't that in great of shape and that adhesive was like literally rock solid. Got the lip out here, drying off again. Hit all the adhesive to the best of my abilities. Gonna go over one more time before I clear weld the stitching here. Once we're done with that, I let the bolts to the coilovers sit in PB Blaster. So we're gonna go ahead and knock those loose, take the coilovers out. I just wanna max them out and see where it looks like. Also clean the threads. And honestly, I'll probably end up raising it back to where it was or at least a little bit lower because I don't want it to run into the issue of my A-arm smacking my shock tower as you see there. All right, daddy's not playing around. First one was a pain. This one I hope isn't as bad. All right, that was easy. Coilovers are out. I went and undid the coil body and the locking collar, gave everything a nice deep clean, the threads, reassembled them, went ahead and maxed them out. Now I'm going to reinstall the driver's side, jack up the car with a wheel on where it sits static and adjust accordingly. So here's the front suspension at static height. I can already tell it's gonna have some mad rake, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the other wheel on. Just put a couple lugs, darken them down, and then put the Mark two on the ground and see where she sits. Probably just gonna raise the front end about an inch and I think that'll give it a nice stance. The Mark II is sitting pretty on the ground, really giving me some mad E36 sedan vibes. Front end honestly looks great. I didn't check turn radius or if it's gonna buckle the fender at all. I'll be sure to do that. But in terms of clearance to the weather guard, we got plenty Feeling kind of up here towards the front end, we might have some rubbing issues. I'll, again, double check that, but for the most part, she is sitting good, and without that front bumper, it just looks super aggressive. I'm gonna see if I can adjust the rears a little bit lower. If I can get like another like half inch to an inch, the Mark II will be sitting perfect. After that, I'll go ahead and resume my work on the front bumper. So as I expected, lock to lock, we are going to run into some Rubbing issues on the fender liner, pretty bad. So we'll just go ahead and raise the front end a good half inch. Definitely here on the driver's side, you can see it's already hitting pretty bad. Okay, so we got the Mark II raised a half inch. Clearance is perfect now. Tried my best with this dent, but it's not having it honestly, but I did manage to get a little bit of it fixed. Just got done mounting the front lip to the bumper, just used some double-sided tape, clean the surface and, you know, press really hard, put some pressure on it, and now this lip is definitely not coming off. I put my money on that. It's looking good, looking good. I also went ahead and clear welded the bracket back onto the bumper, but honestly not that confident that it's going to hold up. Also removed the Radiator, fan, and fan shroud. I think tomorrow I'm gonna to pick up a new serpentine belt. Might as well replace that while I'm here and definitely at the end of the year or January next year, I'm going to do the timing so I can fix that leaky front main seal. Fan cleans up again, fan shroud. Temp sensor is in great shape. Went ahead and removed the intercooler and intercooler piping currently Going to give this a nice cleanup tomorrow and currently doing measurements on where I can mount the universal transmission cooler. So what I'm thinking is just getting a nice long piece of aluminum bracket with two L brackets that I can mount behind it. So I can utilize the mounting holes here and then self tap a hole in the center 
which I'll utilize the bolt hole here from the intercooler. And we have plenty of clearance again to fit it. And I'll just run the lines on the side of the AC condenser and we should be good to go to start buttoning the engine bay back up. Okay, so just got back from Home Depot in the auto parts store, got some brackets, various bolts and nuts, got some more hose. So let me show you the vision. It's got the HPI intercooler core. I got two eight inch brackets. They didn't make a 14 inch bracket that I needed. So I just mounted the two together. I got two L brackets here. My vision or the plan is, it's pretty much gonna mount like that. So I just gotta do some measurements drill some holes, elongate the holes so I can slide them for various fitment and pray that the universal trans cooler doesn't hit this support beam here. Okay, so pretty proud of myself for making this up. Mind you, this is just the mock-up, it is not the final version, but here we got the two eight inch plates that are mounted to the stock HPI mounting location. I had to create another hole to accommodate the length of the cooler We've got the bracket here that mounts to the frame. Come to the back here, we got the two L brackets connected to another bracket that needs to be a little bit more straight. I'm gonna go back to Home Depot and see if I can find something of like that measurement. And then that will mount to the trans cooler there. I'm going to elongate this hole and the bracket hole so I can fit an actual bolt in. The zip ties again are just for mock-up purposes. And I believe this is the correct length downwards where it will clear that center support beam. And the HPI intercooler is pretty girthy, but it has like really solid airflow. So I was like blowing the front side of the intercooler and I can feel it from the back side of the trans cooler. So everything's good. Now I'm just gonna mount this up, see how well it fits. And if everything checks out, I'm gonna run back to Home Depot and finalize the setup. But not too bad, honestly, not too bad making a vision a reality. Honestly, should have just spent the extra $10,000 and got a manual swap Mark II. Say what you will in the comments below. Please roast me, but honestly, this contraption isn't too bad. It can definitely be better, but for the parts that were available at Home Depot, it works, it fits, so it's gonna sit and it clears all obstructions, especially the center rat support beam there and airflow is definitely promoted put a fan to the front and i felt it behind the universal trans cooler so it is all good it is all good got the plates all mounted up nicely all the bolts tightened this well i don't say the spec but they're pretty tight went ahead and just ordered new bolts instead of drilling and elongating the mounting holes here got the hoses on haven't trimmed these up yet, still gotta plan my route, but it's, honestly, it's it's not going anywhere. And again, the bolts are pretty tight. The only thing that sucks is if it starts leaking from the ports here, I'm gonna have to take out the intercooler and the front bumper and all the fun stuff to access it. So that's kind of a con, but honestly, it works and it's going to allow me to run my new Gretti aluminum radiator. What I would do better is just getting a single piece of aluminum and bending it nicely so we don't have like these rivets here and it looks cleaner on each side but I didn't realize that I accidentally purchased the biggest universal trans cooler that Mishimoto had. So honestly it wouldn't really fit anywhere else. I mean I guess I could have mounted it here. I wanted to put it here on the passenger side but again there's no space for it for the length it is, so behind the intercooler was the most logical place. All right, got the HPI intercooler mounted back up, got all the couplers and clamps all nice and tight and secure, ensuring there are no boost leaks. Everything is good. Core is fitting like how it used to, which is nice. Got the universal trans cooler lines ran underneath the for support, looking good. Just going to wait until I get my gritty aluminum radiator to see how well I can tuck the lines. I'm thinking of cutting the stock transmission cooler line there so I can just run it at a shorter distance 
so the fluid travels more efficiently. Still debating on that. I really don't want to touch it too because the less I touch, the less of the headache I will have in the future. But um, in this video, we definitely made a lot of progress. We got the front coilovers cleaned and lowered a little bit more and we fixed the front bumper and lid. Now there are no gaps and it looks like a good three feet car now. Other than that guys, I'm gonna cut the video here. I really want to get a video out. It's been about 10 or 11 days and I finally started building my algorithm back up. Thank you everybody again for the support and all the positive feedback on the Mark II. It is definitely a project, but I can't wait to look back at this car next year and just see how much progress and how much work I put into it. And it's gonna be a whole different car next year, I promise. But like I mentioned, priorities first. You gotta get the Skyline back on the road. Really entertaining the idea of building the 2H Stroker. I just want this car to make five, 600 wheel horsepower safely and reliably, but I will settle honestly for like four, 450 wheel. And once the Skyline is back, running, tuned, all that fun stuff, we can go balls to the wall on the Mark II. But thank you again, everybody, for the continuous love and support. And if you're new to the channel too, and wanna hit the subscribe button, that'd be awesome. And remember, aim high, drive low. We'll catch you next video. Take care.